This lecture will cover the implementation of a stack in C using a linked list. We'll cover it both from a high level perspective and a low level perspective. These rectangles that you'll see piling on top of each other here, they represent structs in C. Each one of them contains a single integer value for this simple example. There's also a pointer that keeps track of the top of the stack. We're going to be talking about a linked list here, just sort of keep that half in mind. We've made a call to the function push. We've passed it the value 20, and we've got one item on the stack, which contains a single integer value 20, and the top pointer is pointing at that. We make another call to the function push, this time with the value 50. That item gets put on top of the stack, and now the top pointer points to the most recent item again. And we do it again, this time with the value 10. That item gets put on top of the stack, and the top pointer points at the new top. This one's a bit different. This time we've made a call to the function pop. That doesn't take any arguments, and it looks like in this implementation, it returns the integer that's contained within the item. So we've got the value 10 here. And the top now points to the new top once we've removed one of those off the stack. And then we push something on again. Now we've pushed negative 10 onto the stack. So you get the idea. We can use push to put items on top of the stack, and we can use pop to get items off of the stack, and it works in that way. Now, let's try and work out how we do that in C with a linked list. Just a few things to note about this implementation before we get on with it. This implementation is a toy example to demonstrate memory allocation, malloc, deallocation free, rearrangement of pointers to maintain stack integrity, that's key here, abstraction of head of stack so that the dynamic stack could be replaced with a static one relatively easily. It is not a real implementation and should not be used in real life. It even uses magic numbers in the code which completely limit its application. So we're going to take a bit of time to try and understand the data structures that are involved here because it's actually quite complex and these slides are going to get a lot harder quite quickly right now. So if you just focus on this left hand side here first of all. So we've got two data structures here. The first is called the stack and it's got one pointer in there of type LM. So it's a pointer to an LM. And this represents that arrow that you saw in the previous diagram here. So this is this, yeah? So that's the pointer that keeps track of the top of the stack. So we're just gonna have one of those. And this data structure here, this represents the rectangles you saw on the previous slides that had the number inside of them, these guys, yeah? So each one of these is an LM, and this is the, the pointer that keeps track of the top. Now you need to look really carefully at this bit. This is quite tricky when you first look at it. So the stack that keeps track of the top, as I keep saying, this has got a pointer to an LM in it. So this points at one of these, whichever's at the top in the visualization we saw. Inside the stack LM, we've got the value. That's the numerical value that we're storing in each of those rectangles that we saw. But this is the really tricky one. This is a self-referential pointer. It's a pointer that points at its own type. So this is a struct stack LM, and we've got a pointer to a struct stack LM. And that means that we can join multiple ones of these together, because each one of these can point to another one. You'll see with the diagram how this works out. Note that we type def struct stack LM as an LM, so you can just refer to it as this further down the line. But inside here, we've defined a self-referential pointer using the full name, not the type def. Now let's just take a look at the right hand side here. So this is not actual code from the program. The purpose of this code is to show you how you can access the contents of a structure either via the pointer or via the value. So it's important for you to understand this visualization. We make a call to malloc. We ask for the size of a single LM, so one of these data structures. That returns the memory location of that on the heap. We then assign that to E, which is of type LM star. Now, if we want to initialize the values inside that data structure, because this is a pointer, we use the arrow notation to access the fields inside the structure. The other way to do this is simply to de declare an LME. Now, this isn't a pointer. This is just one of these structures on the stack. And if we want to access the fields within that structure, we use the dot notation instead. Normally, with dynamic data structures, this is the notation you'll be using because we nearly always have pointers because we've used malloc. When you say on the stack, do you mean the memory stack or the data structure stack? You've confused me there. Oh, right, yes, good point. No, when I was speaking about this, I was referring to the memory stack because this is allocated on the stack because you've declared it in this way. You haven't used malloc like you have here. This is on the heap. This is on the stack. 
So again, this isn't real code from the actual stack implementation. This is just a tiny bit more practice before we get on with it. Last bit honest. So now we'll just be focusing on this data structure, the LM data structure, and this relates to the rectangles that we saw in the early visualization, where they've got a value, but the hidden thing that we didn't see in that visualization is that they also have this prev pointer, which points to another one of these LM data structures. We allocate memory for a new LM. We assign that memory location to E. We then access the fields within this struct via the pointer. So we use the arrow notation and we set the prev pointer to null and we set the integer value inside here, value, to zero. We then declare another LM, E1. This time it's on the stack because we've not used malloc. So we've got memory for this, but it's on the stack. And because we've got the value, not the pointer, we then access it using the dot notation and we initialize this one's prev pointer to the memory location of E. So this one's memory location on the heap. So this one's prev pointer points at this one now. And then we set its value to one. Then we get memory for another LM on the heap. We assign that memory location to E2. We set E2's prev pointer to E1.prev arrow prev. So E2 prev, well that just goes inside the new data structure and gets this value here. So that's the value that we're initializing. And we're assigning that to E1.prev. Now we've used a dot there, why is that? Ah, oh, right, it's because this isn't a pointer, this is a value, so we used a dot notation to get to that. So dot .prev will get us this, which is E, so this could be swapped for E, and then what's E arrow prev? Well, that's null, so it looks like we're assigning null to E2 arrow prev, so we're gonna initialize E2's pointer inside it to null. All of that's gonna be really tricky to follow, especially if you're new to dynamic data structures. But don't worry, we'll kind of be building back up to this in the subsequent slide. So what I hope is when you come back from the end of the lecture, you'll be able to look at this and think, oh yeah, I get that, yeah. Right, let's build our stack. Let's just revisit the stack, which has been typed def to stack. Recall that this is used to keep track of the top of the stack. So it's got a single field in there and that always just points to the top element of the stack. It doesn't do it automatically. Obviously we have to join the pointers to do that and that's what we're gonna look at now. We declare a stack S on the stack. That means the memory is allocated on the stack for this S. Here it is here. So this sort of shorter rectangle represents the top. And inside it, it's got one pointer, TP, and at the moment, that's not pointing at anything. It's not been initialized and it's of type LM star. That's the state of the program here. Next, we make a call to initialize stack. Note this doesn't return anything. So we pass a pointer to S. That means any changes made in this child function will be reflected in the parent function, in this case main, because they're made on the actual object because we pass the memory location of that object. And then inside initialize stack, we assign null to S top. So now this does have a value, it's been initialized to null. So now we make a call to push. We pass it the value 12 and pass it a pointer to S, which we need to keep track of the top of the stack. Inside push, the first thing we do is declare a pointer to one of these elements. And at the moment it's pointing at nothing. Then we make a call to malloc, which allocates us something the size of an element. Here it is here. And then we assign the memory location of malloc to E. So E, this E is now pointing at this new element. At the moment, prev is uninitialized. This next line might strike you as a little strange, but when we've got more items in the stack, it will become clearer what's happening. This line's really important. Let's look at it carefully. E prev, so that's the pointer inside the element. So E prev, we assign that to STP, STP. So this is what keeps track of the top of the stack. So we're gonna assign it to what this was pointing at previously. And currently it's null because there's nothing in the stack. So what we're effectively doing here is we're assigning eprev to null. And there you have it, eprev is now pointing at null. And then we assign stp to e. stp is now assigned to the memory location of this structure. So in effect, this is pointing to the new top. And finally, we copy the value n, which was passed into the function, in this case 12, into the new top. STP value equals N. STP value equals 12, because 12 was the value of N. 
Okay, if you like that one, you'll love this one because it looks a lot neater because we have something in the stack already. So we make another call to push. Again, we pass it a pointer to S. This time we pass in the value 117. We want that to be the new top of the stack. And then of course we follow exactly the same process as previously. We declare a pointer to an element here, E. At the moment it's not pointing at anything. We allocate memory for a new element and we assign that memory location to E. So look, E is pointing at the new element, currently completely uninitialized. We set E prev to STP. So what we're doing is we're pointing this one's previous pointer to the what was the old top. This is going to be the new top. Now we tidy things up a bit. We set STP to E. STP is now pointing at E. And then finally, we have to just do one more thing. We just need to copy the value again that was passed into the function into the new top. So we go STP value equals N, in this case 117. Just want to be really clear about something because it's absolutely key for understanding this. So this is the previous slide where we've just allocated memory for the new element that we're going to put at the top of the stack. Note that this, yeah, this one's prev is pointing to the top of this. So when we reassign this to this, that's how this gets in the middle. Yeah, look at that. So I would click that backwards and forwards if you're not absolutely clear how that's tidied up the stack. Time to stop pushing and start popping. So this is the state of our stack currently. We've pushed two items into it. The top is 117 and the one underneath is, is 12. So you remember we did two push operations. First we pushed 12 and then 117. And this is the state at the moment. And this is how we access the stack. It's var s which keeps the top of the stack. First, we declare a pointer to an LM here, and this time it's called cur, and cur is currently pointing at nothing. Next, we check if STP equals equals null, and if it does, we return negative 1000. In this toy implementation, that means something. What does it signify though? Why are we checking if STP equals equals null? Well, I guess we're checking if the stack is empty, is that right? That's absolutely right. When STP equals null, that means the stack is empty. The last element in the stack normally points at null. But if you look at the diagram here, when this is removed, this one will point at null. And when this is removed, STP points at null. It kind of denotes the end of the list. Now STP doesn't equal null. STP is pointing at this element here. So we assign cur to STP. So we point this pointer at the same memory location that STP is pointing at. So now we've got two pointers pointing to the first element on the stack. Next we assign this value here, 117, to a local variable in this function. So that's rep value. So we say rep value equals STP value. STP value, there's 117 stored in there. So rep value now equals 117. Now of course we're not done yet. We've got our value and we could return that, but we need to tidy up the stack and remove that top element from it. Okay, we've got some tricky pointer rearrangements here, so you're going to have to look really carefully and we're going to have to flick back to the previous slide probably. So STP, so this is STP, equals STP prev. So what I'm arguing here is that STP prev is this one, so I've assigned STP to that. STP equals STP prev. What we're doing here is we're moving along the prev pointers in kind of a chain so we can find the next thing in the stack, which is just below the old top. The trouble with this diagram is we've already arranged the pointers, so it's hard to see what STP prev is. So let's go to the previous slide and look carefully what STP prev is. So we're on this slide now and we can just follow the pointers straight down. So STP points at this one, and this one's prev is this one. So that is this element, yeah? This element. So we're rearranging the pointers so the top now points to the next one along the stack as we go down it. It looks now that the pointers have been rearranged. STP points at the new top. We've got our value out, but we've kept this pointer cur pointing at the old top. What would happen if we didn't do that? Well, hopefully this line helped you answer that question. We need to keep track of this element because we've rearranged the pointers. If we didn't have cur assigned to its memory location, we'd have no way of freeing it later. And if we don't free it, we get a memory leak. So we free cur, this one here, so it's starting to disappear. 
pop, it's gone. And then we return ret value here, 117, the value that was stored in the top element of the stack. So take a moment to admire the beauty of our stack, all nice and tidy now. We remove the old top element and now we've got 12 as the top element. So it follows exactly the same process when we call pop again. We start by declaring a pointer to an LM here. And here it is, it's currently pointing at nothing because it's just got a garbage value in it. And then we check if the stack is empty. We check if STP equals null. Well, STP does not equal null. It's currently assigned to the memory location of the top element of the stack, the only element in the stack, which contains the number 12. Next, we assign cur to the memory location pointed to by STP, i.e. we point cur at the top of the stack as STP points at the top of the stack, the first element in the stack currently containing the number 12. And next, we rearrange the pointers. So we assign STP, STP to STP prev. Now, STP prev in this case is null because we've only got one element in the list. So we're assigning STP, STP to STP prev, which points at null. And there we have it here. Then we call free on the old top. This element here is starting to disappear. Pop, it's gone. We return rep value, and now we're back to how we were at the start when we just had the pointer to the top of the list with no actual elements in the list. Okay, so I know you guys are really busy. You've got loads of lab work to be getting on with, so maybe you don't want to do my take-home challenge, but at least think about how you could do the same thing to keep your STP structure, but instead of having a linked list below it, a stack, can you do it with an array?